All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, we find a most interesting and meaningful passage of Scripture. The Lord is saying to His followers, and let me stop right there just in light of some things that are being said today. I've heard people say, now, Paul didn't know what he was talking about. You know, Paul contradicts himself. Friends, Paul is writing by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And as Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 13, in speaking to His disciples, but when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He shall guide you into all truth. He shall not speak from Himself, but whatsoever things He shall hear, these shall He speak. He shall glorify Me, and shall take of Mine, and shall declare it unto you. What is the Lord saying here, 13 through 14, in John chapter 16? Friends, he's saying that every word in this blood-sealed covenant that we refer to as the New Testament, that's in contrast, of course, with the Old Testament, this is validated by the shed blood of the Son of God. Every word in it is true. It is a word of Christ, and there is not a single contradiction therein. There is no conflict in the teaching of this book. It is in perfect harmony with itself. Paul is writing by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So when you read any portion of the New Testament, you can say, now, the Lord is saying to us, and He is indeed. What was it that inspiration revealed to us here in Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7? Oh, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your forbearance be known unto all men, for the Lord is at hand. In nothing be anxious, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. That is indeed a meaningful passage, isn't it? And yet, I find many good folk today in our turbulent, ever-changing world who seem to think there's just no occasion for rejoicing. Man, there's anxiety on every hand, wars and terrorism and problems of all kinds, and we stand in danger at all. What? Friend, you're placing the emphasis in the wrong place. What did you say, Paul? Oh, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Uh, let your forbearance, that is gentleness, patience, uh, be known unto all men. Well, why should I do that? Oh, for the Lord is at hand. <laughs> What's that? Uh, the Lord is here. He cares for me. He is my protector. Uh, do you recall in Matthew chapter 14 at verse 27, the statement that Jesus made? He said, uh, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did he make that statement recorded in verse 27 of Matthew chapter 14? Friend, he's walking on the water on the Sea of Galilee right in the midst of a storm. I mean, his disciples are in the boat, and that thing is rocking, and the danger is apparent, and you could drown. A what did you say, Lord? Friends, right in the midst of the storms of life, Jesus is saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Someone says, preacher, how can I in our world today, knowing the limitations of the flesh, my inability to control the circumstances that surround me, how could I rejoice? Oh, you'll have to place the emphasis uh, properly. You remember that Jesus said in John 16 at verse 33, 
Uh, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. Oh, in the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Someone says, preacher, I, I still don't, uh, I don't understand. Friend, you are not a physical being in a physical world primarily. No, no. Made in the image and the likeness of God, you are an immortal spirit. You are possessed of free moral agency. Now, if we aren't careful in this old world, we're governed by the physical senses. In other words, we take into consideration all of that which we can observe uh, in this material world. Friend, none of that will last. Uh, that's all temporary. That simply will not endure. Oh, and if you place your faith in such things, you lose your soul. Uh, Jesus said, didn't he, Matthew 16, verse 26, For what shall a man be profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Uh, now someone says, well, are you saying, preacher, that uh, the body is not important? Why, well, certainly not. No, sir, the body is important. Know you not that your body is a temple of God, uh, that the Spirit of God uh, dwelleth in you? Oh, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 at verse 16. So this body is a dwelling place of the all. Right. Why do I have it? What is it to be used for? What is the... Oh, I am to use my life and my influence, uh, my conduct, my speech to glorify Him who died to provide human redemption. So I am, as it were, a representative of Christ in this world. So then I must take care of this physical body. I use it to represent Him. How long will it last? Well, friend, let me tell you, <laughs> not long. Not long at all. I understand that young people have difficulty comprehending the rapid passage of time. I was young once. No, I remember that it took forever. If for time but it passes so rapidly. Uh, this is not going to endure. Now, it's on that basis that Jesus said in Matthew 10 at verse 28, Fear not him who can destroy the body, and after that hath no more that he can do. But rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Now again, Lord, are you saying that I should not be anxious or worried or concerned at all about the possibility that I may be slain, uh, I should just walk up with a big smile and say, why, sure, just, friend, that's not what he's saying. No, no, common sense would tell you uh, that fear is a built-in safety mechanism. Uh, Paul was let down by the wall, you remember, uh, to escape the authorities that would take his life. Sure, you stay alive as long as you can. Yes, you dodge the bullets as long as possible. Oh, there's no question about take care of the... But what is he saying? Oh, there's coming a time yeah, right down where the rubber meets the road. I mean, at the end of life, you're going to lose this. You see, this simply will not endure. Uh, Hebrews 9, verse 27, It is appointed unto man once to die. After this, the judgment... Well, that's what I'm to be concerned with, primarily, indeed. Yes, take care of the body. Well, yes, I avoid death as long as possible. No, I don't want to die, per se. I'm not ready to, you know, I have loved ones who depend on me, uh, and I enjoy the association, but whether I like it or not, whether or not I walk with the Lord, I'm still going to die. You see, it doesn't matter when or under what circumstances you die or how long you may dwell in this physical body. No, no. It's not the quantity of life that counts. It is the quality of life. Well, why would the Lord then say, fear not him, we're going to destroy the body? Oh, it's the contrast. But rather be more concerned with him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. You see, when I come to understand who I am, my total dependence upon him from whom every good and every perfect gift flows, and it does, James chapter 1 at verse 17. When I become concerned with my relationship to God, oh, then I place the emphasis on the spiritual things in life. Why, certainly, uh, that's the only way to go. Nothing else will endure. You gain the whole world? How long do you plan to keep it? 
Now, friends, when you stop to think about it, as we've said many, many times, you didn't bring it, and you won't take it. Oh, and while you're here, it isn't yours. The earth and the fullness thereof belong to God. Oh, sure. You buy your place, you take care of it. You repair it if need be, you dress it up. That's good. That's fine. That shows industry. That shows an interest. And that's, but uh, even though you hold a deed and it's paid for uh, completely in just a few years, someone else will hold that deed. You won't be here, but you will live forever. The question is, where? Oh, that's why the Lord is trying to enable me to understand that I am to place the emphasis on the spiritual man. And by the way, if I do that, then I understand what he's saying in the storms of life. Be of good cheer. How could that be? Oh, the Lord's on my side. The Lord is here. He's always present with those who love Him, and to walk in harmony with His will. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness, your forbearance, your patience be known unto all men. And I should do that for what reason? The Lord's at hand. What was that? Uh, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. The Lord is here. I don't have to be inordinately concerned, even with the welfare of the physical man. Oh, I don't have to be concerned with the welfare of the physical world about me. Sure, it's the handiwork of God, and it's beautiful beyond belief. But you know, men have devised weapons that level the forests, that destroy the homes, that take human life. I mean, we live in a terrible, turbulent, fallen world where men follow Satan rather than the Lord. Well, somebody says, how am I going to escape that? Will the Lord give me power to... No, 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 no. They went about in sheepskins, in goatskins. Oh, they were tempted. Uh, they were sawn asunder. They were slain by the sword. Oh, friends, the earth was not worthy of God's people. They dwelt in the deserts, the mountains, the caves, the holes of the earth. Uh, the latter portion of the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. This is describing what class of people? Oh, those who walk by faith. They are always persecuted. They are never exalted for the faith that they exercise. And when they teach the truth in opposition to error, they're persecuted. Why, certainly. Uh, Satan knows exactly how to go about Hey, I don't have to worry about that. Just teach the truth. Live in harmony with the Lord's will. Well, somebody says, preacher, you can lose your life. Uh -uh. Oh, no, I can lose the old physical man. Uh, that's not my life. No, no. I'm an immortal spirit. Fear not him who can destroy the body. After that, half the more that he can do. Uh, you fear God, he'll destroy both body and soul in hell unless we walk with him. So it's where we place the emphasis in this old material world. You cannot rejoice otherwise. It's, uh, it's out of the question. But let's notice that passage uh, in its uh, entirety. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your forbearance be known unto all men, for the Lord is at hand. Now listen to him. In nothing be anxious. <laughs> what? In nothing be anxious. Lord, there are so many problems. And oh, friend, uh, do you remember, what is it, in Mark uh, chapter 4, about, uh, you could begin about verse 37. Check me out on this. Uh, the Lord is with his disciples in the boat. They're crossing Gennesaret, the, the Sea of Galilee, and a strong wind beats down on the surface. Oh, man, the waves begin to rise. The boat is filling with water, uh, but he's asleep on a cushion in the stern, in uh, the back of the ship. And they came to him and said, Lord, uh, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And instantly you can see your reflection mirrored in the calm surface of Galilee. Who is this? This is Emmanuel. This is God with us. This is my Savior who died to redeem my soul. What am I being concerned with? The winds, the waves, the immediate, the physical? I, no, 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 no. I need to be concerned with doing the will of him who has the power to control the affairs of life. You see, my father is in charge. Well, someone said, preacher, 
If God is in charge, why do we have such turbulence in this old friend? You are an immortal spirit, and you are possessed of the power of choice, and God allows it to be that way. But bear in mind, He'll punish you. You say, read the Old Testament. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that through patience and through comfort of the Scriptures we might have hope, Romans 15, verse 4. These things happen unto them by way of example, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages are come, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 at verse 11. God allows man to go his own way. He pleads with his prophets of the Old Testament, with his ministers in the Christian age. He sets forth the truth. He pleads with men to follow him, book, chapter, and verse. Just do what he said, nothing more, nothing. But uh, people are not doing that. Oh, they're free moral agents. Uh, that's fine. They make their choice. But there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And as sure as you live, you and I will stand before God in judgment. The basis of that judgment, friends, we've mentioned it many times. John chapter 12, verse 48. Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my sayings hath one that judgeth him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. And we observed that these are the words of Christ, <clears throat> every one. Nothing more, nothing less. Can't add to, delete from, or substitute for. Many people are doing that today, but God's people speak as the oracles of God. First Peter 4 at verse 11. We just preach the good news of the gospel. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, as Paul charged Timothy. Yes, but that's not popular. Right. It wasn't designed to be popular. I say, never has been popular. They what? Uh, they were stoned. Uh, they were sawn asunder. Uh, they were uh, tempted. Uh, they were slain with a sword. Uh, they went about in goatskins. Uh, destitute, afflicted, ill, treated. Who are these people? Well, they're the ones that follow the Lord. Well, somebody says, why doesn't the Lord do more for them than to allow them to suffer? That's a part of following the Lord. When He hung on the cross, the weight of the average-sized Jew, about 33 years old, hung against the raw, naked, bloody, fevered edges of torn flesh. This is the innocent, pure, guiltless, sinless Son of God. Why is He on that cross? To pay the penalty for my sins. Why should I expect Him to give me a perfect body, strong and agile, and let me live for a hundred years and never be afflicted? Friend, it isn't done that way. Satan is opposed to truth, and he intends to place every kind of obstacle before you and so Christianity actually is simply overcoming one difficulty, one hardship after another. Rejoice in the Lord always. Oh, I can rejoice because He's present. Oh, no, no. He will not allow me to be tempted above that which I'm able to bear. Oh, He's faithful. Uh, he'll give me the strength to overcome the temptations of life. Doesn't He say that? If 1 Corinthians chapter 10 at verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as man can bear. For God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able, but will with every temptation make also the way of escape. Isn't that wonderful? In the midst of the storm, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. I don't have to be afraid when Christ is with me. Oh, yes. You can suffer all kinds of physical affliction. Oh, that's not particularly important. Why, certainly not. And you know, someone says, well, now, he may not do... Ooh, wait, wait. What was it the writer of Hebrews said, chapter 13, verse 8? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today, yea, and forever. Friends, he will never leave you. You could back up to verse 5 right there in Hebrews chapter 13, and he'll tell you, I will in no wise leave thee, or neither will I in any wise forsake thee. Oh, and he's the same forever. Yesterday, today, yea, and forever. He walks with those who serve him. Yes, they suffer physically. Oh, indeed, many of them have lost their lives. Stephen died the death of a martyr. He died praying, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. You can read that in Acts chapter 7. 
Oh, my friend, you're going to suffer if you live for Christ. Oh, but the inner man, ah, the peace that comes through faith, rejoice. Even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of persecution, even in the dangers uh, so prominent uh, and apparent uh, in this whole world today, you don't have to worry about that. The worst that could happen there is what's going to happen anyway. <laughs> you can't stay here forever. You're going to die. How you die, <clears throat> it's not important. Uh, when you die, <coughs> excuse me, that's not important to say. It is the quality of your life. That is the important thing. You know, the Lord has made us more uh, than conquerors over the affairs of this old life. Eh, what was that statement uh, made by the inspired Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 16? He said, Wherefore we faint not, but though our outward man is decaying... Wait, wait, wait a minute, Paul. What are you saying? Friends, this won't last. I can testify to that. I'm looking for the big 8-0, and I'm anxious to arrive there. But, uh, hey, I still think 25. But let me tell you, as I often say, when I reach to get it, it doesn't fetch like it did when I was 25. Changes that occur. <clears throat> Deterioration of the physical man. Uh, what did you say, Paul? <clears throat> Wherefore we faint not, but though our outward man is decaying, no question about that. Oh, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. How do we renew the inward man? Oh, Jesus said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven, of which a man may eat and live forever. Oh, and the bread which I give is my flesh for the life of the world. Uh, John chapter 6 at verse 51. Oh, in verse 54 he said, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. Oh, it doesn't matter how long he lives here on the earth. It doesn't matter how much affliction and suffering he may endure here upon the earth. It doesn't matter how he dies when he leaves this old earth. That's not important. Death is separation of body and spirit. What preparation are you making to live with the Lord? Oh, wherefore we faint not. But though our outward man is decaying, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is for the moment... <laughs> Wait a minute, Paul. Light affliction? Paul, man, you were stoned and left for drug out of the city and left for dead. Right. Why they do that? Because he was preaching the truth. If Paul, you were beaten five times, 39 stripes each, by the Jewish people, your own people. Right. Why? Because he stood for truth in opposition to error. If Paul, you were beaten three times with Roman rods. Why? Because the heathen doesn't appreciate spiritual truth. If Paul, you suffered shipwreck uh, day and night in the deep. I mean, you endured all of these things because of your fidelity to the Lord. Right. What did he say? Listen to it. Our light affliction. Why do you call such things light affliction? Oh, it's just momentary. This won't last. It's just momentary. For our light affliction, which is for the moment, worketh for us more and more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. Oh, but notice the viewpoint. While we look not at the things which are seen, oh, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And we know that if the earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, and you and I both know it will, there's no question about that. Stroll through the cemetery? Why, sure, we're going to pass. We can't endure here for, oh. And we know that if the earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, and it will be, oh, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Who has that building, that house uh, from God? Oh, those who walk according to His will. Those who show themselves faithful while they tabernacle <coughs> upon the earth. Yeah, but you suffer some. That's all physical. That's all temporary. That's uh, momentary. <coughs> no, that won't last. No, no, but you and I will live forever. How do we gain that place in heaven? Oh, Fidelity to Him who died to redeem our souls. I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And there's no question about that. 
All one of reasonable intelligence needs to do is read the Bible. It's obviously the product of an infinite mind. Jesus Christ is God's Son. Just consider His teaching, His instruction to man. It's counter to the worldly concept. They say, Whoso smiteth thee on thy right cheek, deck him. Oh, that's what the world would say. No, no, turn to him the other also. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Friend, believing that with all of my heart, I made up my mind that I want to be like him. I don't want to live for Satan. I don't want to walk in sin and religious error. No, I've repented. And I confessed Christ before men, and according to his instruction, I was buried with him in baptism, raised a new creation in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. It has been a pleasure studying the Bible with you today. Would you be interested in learning more about God's Word? We have a series of Bible lessons that you can study at home. This new six-lesson Bible study is offered free to our viewers. When you make your request, you will be sent the first in this series of six Bible studies. Call us at 1-800-683-3120 or visit our website at preachingthegospeltv.com. While you're there, sign our guest book and let us know what you think of our program. You can email us at ptgwjw at aol.com or write to us at Preaching the Gospel, P.O. Box 1484, Dalton, Georgia, 30721. Audio cassettes or CDs of today's lessons are available free of charge. Just contact us with this program number on your screen. Members of the Church of Christ in your area have paid for this program, and they would love for you to come and visit their services. If you need help locating a congregation in your area, or if you would like more information about the church described in the Bible, please contact us. Preaching the Gospel is under the oversight of the elders at the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. And now, back to James Watkins. Friends, where do you place the emphasis in this whole world? Now, I know that things are important in this world. We understand that. We have responsibilities. Let our people maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not uh, unproductive. Oh, we understand that. Titus 3, verse 14. If any man won't work, neither let him eat. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. He's not taking away from our responsibilities in this world. He is talking about where we should place the emphasis. I will live forever. Hey, I'm only going to live here for a very short time. Oh, compared to eternity, a very, very short time. Oh, and this life is the ground of preparation through which to meet God acceptably. And the marvelous thing about the New Testament is that herein He gives me instructions by which to live in this world so that I can live with Him in eternity. Are you giving your life to the Lord? Have you obeyed His will? Think about it, friends. Study His Word and apply these principles.